hello children the next story that we are going to discuss today is the last leaf this story is written by o henry an american author o henry was his pen name his real name was william sydney porter william sydney porter and he wrote these stories in the pen name of o henry he was a uh, 19th century author he was born on 11th september 1862 11th september 1862 in the usa and he died on 5th june 1910 1910 in the usa he has written many famous short stories and the last leaf is one of them it's a beautiful story about the artists two young artists and one old artist uh, the theme of this story is love compassion and sacrifice love compassion and sacrifice love and compassion between the two artists sue and jonesy and compassion and sacrifice between jonesy and the old artist whose name is Burman. So these are the three main characters in this story: Sue, John C, and Burman. And the theme, as I have already told you, is love, compassion, and sacrifice. When we discuss this story, you will come to know how the theme has been developed by the author, very vividly and very beautifully. Uh, as the introduction goes, it is here. You see. it is autumn the wind is blowing hard and it is raining heavily all the leaves on an ivy creeper have fallen except one why doesn't the last leaf fall that we will see when we discuss this story why doesn't the last leaf fall the first the first paragraph runs like this sue and jonesy two young artists shared a small flat the flat was on the third story of an old house they were the artists who earned their living by selling their paintings they made paintings they marketed them and they earned money and with that money they earned their bread okay so that was the source of their income sue and jonesy and as you have seen that they lived in, they, they lived in a small flat on the third floor of an old house jonesy fell very seriously ill in november she had pneumonia she would lie in her bed without moving just gazing out of the window so her friend became very worried she sent for the doctor although he came every day there was no change in jonesy's condition one day the doctor took sue aside and asked her and asked her is anything worrying jonesy because when the doctor saw that he is he he was giving proper medicine proper treatment and proper care to jonesy but she was not recovering from illness she was not showing any improvement so the doctor was worried he was surprised rather why the medicines are not working on jonesy so he, one day he comes and he takes her friend sue aside because sue and jonesy we have seen were sharing the same apartment okay so he calls her aside and asks in secret is anything worrying jonesy no replied sue but why do you ask the doctor said jonesy it seems has made up her mind that she is not going to get well if she doesn't want to live medicines will not help her doctor understand the psychology of the girl okay and that's why he tells sue that jonesy has made up her mind that she is not going to get well 
and if she doesn't want to live <coughs> sorry medicines will not help her that means medicines only work when you have firm conviction that you are going to recover you have a strong will that you are going to conquer the disease you are going to defeat the disease you have you are going to emerge triumphant while fighting with your ailment or disease then only the medicines work doctor knows, knows it and that's why when he finds no recovery in john's condition he asks this question to sue whether she is worrying for something next paragraph as you can see here sue tried her best to make john c take an interest in things around her she talked about clothes and fashions but john c did not respond john c continued to lie still on her bed sue brought her drawing board into john c's room and started painting to take john c's mind off her illness she whistled while working so the, in this paragraph we find that she does a lot of things to distract john c's attention from her illness she makes her think something else something extra something else than her illness and she talks about the clothes and the fashions and the paintings and she even she brings a, a drawing board in her room and starts painting there and while painting she is whistling so that she can somehow entertain john c and john c would stop worrying that means here she is behaving like a true friend she wants her to recover soon she is her true friend next paragraph suddenly sue heard john c whisper something she quickly rushed to the bed and heard john c counting backwards she was looking out of the window and was saying 12 after some time she whispered 11 then 10 then 9 8 7 sue anxiously looked out of the window she saw an old ivy creeper climbing halfway up the brick of the brick wall opposite their window in the strong wind outside the creeper was shedding its leaves so one day when sue found that john c is counting something in whisper in whisper she was counting something she wonders what she is counting and that that and that too she is doing count down downwards or backwards she is counting so she looks outside through the window and she finds that that on the opposite wall there is there is an ivy creeper an old ivy creeper and as it was the autumn season in the autumn season the trees shed their leaves autumn season is the season between summer and winter between summer and winter september october and november these are the months of autumn season and from uh, uh, from december onwards the winter season starts isn't it so this season is the season when the trees shed their leaves and in the same way the ivy creeper which was which had climbed the opposite wall also was shedding the leaves so it was a common natural phenomenon and it had it had nothing to do with anybody's death or anything like that but john c had something on her mind and for the first time sue is discovering what john c is doing and she wonders why she is counting backwards okay let us see the next paragraph my dear boys and girls what is it dear sue asked six whispered john c they are falling faster now three days ago there were almost hundred leaves there are only five left now 
it is autumn said sue and the leaves will fall because autumn is the season when the trees shed their leaves it is the natural phenomenon she says see she tells john c okay when the last leaf falls i will die said john c with finality that means she had thought thought finally that she is going to die with the dropping of the last leaf i have known this for the last few days john c tells sue oh that's nonsense replied sue what have old ivy leaves to do with your getting well the doctor is confident that you will be better john c did not say anything sue went and brought her a bowl of soup i don't want any soup said john c i am not hungry now there are only four leaves left i want to see the last one fall before it gets dark then i will sleep forever now look here when sue finds that john c is terribly depressed she is terribly depressed she goes in the kitchen and brings a bowl of soup for her it shows how caring she is for her friend how kind and how caring she is for her friend okay and how she is tending her so tenderly while she while john c is suffering from pneumonia but still john c doesn't respond she says that she 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 is not hungry and she is not going to take the take the bowl of soup she is not going to drink it she says so sat on john c's bed kissed her and said you are not going to die i can't draw the curtain for i need the light i want to finish the painting and get some money for us please my dear here in the picture you can see he she is john c and she is sue these two friends okay in the picture you can see so she says she says as i was just reading here you see in the on the screen please my dear friend please my dear friend she begged john c promise not to look out of the window while i paint she says i want light through the window that's why i am not drawing the curtains because i am painting now and for for painting i want light but you don't look out of the window she says okay all right said john c finish your painting soon for i want to see that see the last leaf fall i am tired of waiting i have to die so let me go away peacefully like one of those poor tired leaves she says the leaves are poor and tired and she is likening herself she is comparing herself to the with the poor tired leaves of the ivy creeper and that is why she, and this is one of the reasons why she wants to die she was suffering from she was of course she was suffering from pneumonia and she feels that she is a poor tired girl exactly like the ivy leaves and that's why as the ivy leaves are dropping they are shedding they are falling down in the same way she is going to pass away she is going to die this is her mindset and that mindset is to be changed for her survival it is necessary okay so that is on her mind try to sleep said sue i have to paint an old miner miner means one who works in a mine it might be any mine mine of uh, this coal or any metal okay iron ore or anything iron ore or anything else i will call barman up to be my mod she says i i want an old man 
to pose as a mariner uh, sorry to, to pose as a minor okay and burman will be my model i will paint burman as a minor in my painting so rust down burman lived on the ground floor in the same building burman lived on the ground floor they lived on the third floor okay and burman was burman was or he was a 60 year old painter his lifelong dream was to paint a masterpiece masterpiece means the best piece of painting the best piece of painting but that had remained a dream so burman's lifelong dream was to paint a masterpiece but but that had remained a dream he could never paint a masterpiece till now even if he is 60 years old well why he couldn't paint he might have painted the paintings of course but the real theme of the for the painting might still be missing so he thought that this is not the this is not the masterpiece people won't like it and that's why he was not satisfied with the theme of the paintings which he had painted and he wanted to paint it uh, he wanted to paint such a painting which would really be termed as the masterpiece painted by Perman. so that was the dream of the artist as we are told by the author here my dear boys and girls see this paragraph okay sue powered out her worries to burman she tells about about john c okay she told him how john c was convinced that she would die when the last leaf fell then burman replies is the burman then burman replies i can as you can see on the screen just now you see is she stupid asked Bahman. how can she be so foolish Bahman also says that it is very stupid thinking to relate one's life with the falling of the i believes it's a foolish thinking and how can be how can she behave like a fool Bahman also wonders she is running a high temperature complained sue she refuses to eat or drink and that worries me a lot here again the reason why sue was worried too much about her friend she wanted her to eat and drink and recover soon but she is not responding and that's why she is worrying too much for her she is a very caring and kind-hearted girl a true friend indeed okay then what burman replies next line i will come with you and see john c burman said they tiptoed into the room tiptoe okay on the tip of the toe they walked very stealthily without making any sound into the room where john c was sleeping john c was sleeping sue drew the curtains together and they went to the next room she do me she, she drew the curtain so she so that john c couldn't look out and they go to the next room she peeped out through the window there was only one leaf on the creeper it was raining heavily and an icy cold wind was blowing it seemed as though the the leaf it seemed as though the leaf would fall any minute now. Burman did not say a word. He went back to his room. When Sue sh showed Burman the last leaf clinging to the ivy creeper and told him that John C. thinks that when that last leaf falls, she would die. Burman hears it, he listens it very carefully, but he doesn't respond to her, he doesn't give any reply. Okay, he doesn't say a word and he goes back to his room without 
uttering a word without saying anything. That means there is something on her mind. He wants to do something. He wants to help John C. He wants to help John C. He wants to see that John C. lives. She doesn't die. Here in the picture you can see his Bahman and the girl is Sue. And the ivy leaf, leaf also you can see on the creeper. John C. woke up next morning. Bahman goes to his room. We have seen in the previous paragraph. Then next morning, John C. woke up next morning in a feeble voice. She asked Sue to draw the curtains. Sue was nervous. She was nervous because she thought that the last leaf might have fallen and it will be it would be shocking for John C to see that the last leaf has fallen and God knows what was going to happen. And that's why Sue was very nervous. She drew back the curtains very reluctantly, very unwillingly, very reluctantly she, she drew the curtains of the window. Oh, Sue exclaimed as she looked at the vine creeper. Look, there, there is still one leaf on the creeper. It looks quite green and healthy in spite of the storm and the fierce winds, it didn't fall. Very fierce, very strong winds blew the whole night, but the last leaf didn't fall. And it looks quite green and healthy. Sue also was very much surprised to see the last leaf still clinging to the ivy creeper. I heard the wind last night, said John C. I thought it would have fallen. It will surely fall today, then I will die. Still, John C. is hopeless. She, she has no hope of living at all. She says, okay, it has not fallen. It could not fall during the night, but during the day, sometime it might fall and then I will die. You won't die, said Sue energetically. You have to live for your friends. What would happen to me if you die? That means I love you so dearly that when you die, I will also be, I will also be almost dead without you. I will also be very much shocked and sorrowful if you go. So you shouldn't die. You won't die, she says. Okay. John C. smiled weakly and closed her eyes. After every hour, after every hour or so, she would look out of the window and find the leaf still there. It seemed to be clinging to the creeper. So each hour, each hour, John, John C. looked out through the window and found the last ivy leaf still clinging to the creeper. It had not fallen, nor it was falling, even if the wind was blowing. In the evening, there was another storm, but the leaf did not fall. John C. lay for a long time looking at the leaf. Then she called out to Sue. The whole day passed. Evening came and there was another storm. The winds were very strong, but the last leaf didn't fall. So now there is something, some hope on John's mind. She thinks something and she calls Sue. And when Sue comes, she makes a confession. John C. makes a confession to Sue. She says, she, uh, confession means she admits her wrong to Sue. Okay, she says, I have been a bad girl. You have looked after me so lovingly and I have not cooperated with you. I have been depressed and gloomy. That's why she wanted to die. She was depressed, dejected, downhearted and gloomy so sad so unhappy extremely sad and unhappy and sorrowful she was she said and that's why she wanted to die she wanted to die the last leaf has shown me how wicked i have been 
how bad, how wicked I have been. I have realized that it is a sin to want to die. She says, the last leaf has taught me a lesson. It gave me a moral. The moral is that it is a sin to want to die. We should think in the terms of living. See, the strong storm wanted to try to blow the weak, weak ivy leaf. But the storm couldn't blow it. The storm couldn't let it fall. The tiny leaf resisted the strong storm. In the same way, we also should resist and fight against the difficulties and problems in our life. We shouldn't surrender. We shouldn't give in. We shouldn't surrender. We should strongly take arms against the ocean of sorrows and sadness. And we should fight against them and defeat them. So it is, and, and we should be fighting with a strong will and firm conviction that we are going to defeat them, defeat all our problems and difficulties and we, we can never be defeated by them. We will be the winners, we will be the triumphant ultimately. This is what you should, we should think. Now this lesson is learnt by John C from the last leaf. The last leaf has taught the lesson, this moral lesson to John C and she understands that it is a sin to, to want to die. So the tiny leaf, you can learn lessons from anywhere, from environment, from your surroundings. The same thing is has happened here in case of John C. So that is the it's a good message for the readers of this story. Okay. Then when John C admits that she was on the on the wrong footing while considering to die and she admits that she was wrong sue becomes sue becomes very happy sue hugged john c she embraced her then she gave her lots of hot soup and a mirror john c combed her hair and smiled brightly so soup and she gives her, her a great hug first and then lots of hot soup she gives she drinks now for the first time in many days she she drinks now she starts drinking because now she has regained the hope hope for living not and she had dropped the idea of dying and that's why she eats she starts eating so there is a great change in her mindset there is a great psychological change in her mind well then what happens in the afternoon the doctor came in the afternoon the doctor came after examining his patient he told sue john c now has the will to live i am confident she will recover soon doctor understands that now the psychological pressure for dying is gone she she is relieved from that pressure and she is very much confident of living and that's why the doctor himself also was very confident that she will recover very soon now i then he gives the clean sheet a green signal good words he speaks for john c then and now doctor's medicines also will work because her, her mindset is changed. John C's mindset, mindset is changed. Now I must go downstairs. The doctor further says, now I must go downstairs and see Burman. He is also suffering from pneumonia, but I am afraid there is no hope for him. Why the doctor feels that there is no hope for Burman? Because he was 60 years old and he was terribly struck by pneumonia and he was physically weak okay for these reasons and so many other reasons it was not possible that the life of burman 
could be saved. There is little hope, he says. Okay. The doctor also says there is little hope that he would survive. The next morning, next paragraph is like this. The next morning, Sue came and sat on Johnsy's bed. Taking Johnsy's hand in hers, she said, I have something to tell you. Mr. Berman died of pneumonia this morning. He was ill for only two days. Next morning, when John C. has started recovering, or rather we can say she has recovered already, Sue goes to John C.'s room, John C.'s room and tells her that Berman is dead. He died of pneumonia. He, he caught pneumonia two days back. The first day, the janitor, janitor means the watchman, one who look, looks after the building. Okay. The first day, the janitor found him on his bed. His clothes and shoes were wet and he was shivering. He had been out in that stormy night. See, the artist, old artist Berman had been out in that stormy night. In the picture you can see that it is a stormy night and there is a lantern and in his hand there is brush and these and, and and this is the paint. There is one color but he uses various colors of paint and he is painting this I will leave here. It is the outside scene in the garden near the wall on which the ivy creeper had climbed. Okay, this is the scene you can see. So he had been out in that stormy night. This is what Sue tells John C. Then they found a ladder and a lantern still lighted lying near his bed. There were also some brushes and green and yellow pants on the floor near the ladder. John C. Dear, said Sue, look out of the window. Look at that ivy leaf. Haven't you wondered why it doesn't flutter? Flutter means move and make sound. Why it doesn't flutter? Why it doesn't move and make sound of fluttering? When the wind blows, that's Burman's masterpiece. He painted it the night the last leaf fell. So the, the ivy leaf, which is green and clinging, still clinging to the ivy creeper is not the real leaf. It is the artificial leaf which has been painted by Mr. Berman. And he painted that leaf when the original leaf dropped from the creeper. And that's why she says it is Berman's masterpiece. Why it is Berman's, mas Berman's masterpiece? Because by painting that last leaf, he was able to do some noble act. He was able to save somebody's life. He was able to save John C's life. Because in the previous, in one of the uh, paragraph, previous paragraph, we have seen that when Sue shows the last leaf clinging to the ivy leaf in that stormy stormy atmosphere okay Berman doesn't utter a word he goes back to his room he at that time itself he had on his mind that he should somehow anyhow he should try to save the life of the girl he should try to save life of the girl that was on his mind and that's why without speaking anything without without a word he goes to his room and he, because he has he, he had made up his mind that he would go 
and he would bend the last leaf and he goes in the night when the last leaf drops it falls down he pants the last leaf that means he he pants an artificial leaf at the ivy creeper and it was his noble act that leaf when it was seen the next morning and the next whole day by john c still clinging to the creeper helped him helped her to recover she dropped the idea of dying she survived but the old artist burman died he was old he could not resist the resist the attack of pneumonia and he died so his death is really a sacrifice he sacrificed his life to save the life of a young artist so in this way this story is the story of sacrifice burman's sacrifice okay sacrifice he, he, he sacrificing one's own life for the good of the others and this is the story of compassion burman had deep compassion and affection for that for his fellow artist that young girl john c and at the same time sue also loved john c very much so these are the these are the main things main these are these are a few things which uh, by which we conclude or we can say that this story <coughs> is built on a very strong theme of love compassion and sacrifice as i told you in the begin beginning of this story about the theme you can really relate, relate all these things and the other developments in the story which i have discussed while i had been discussing those paragraphs those things also you can relate to the theme of this story in this way my dear boys and girls this beautiful story by o henry is over there are some exercises in the end you do them i'll be giving you some additional questions and in case of any doubt you may ask me uh, that's all for today i wish you all the best bye